Praise the Lord, everyone. This is Pastor Rodney coming to you again with more instruction from God's Holy Word and your daily drive-by. Listen, I told you all that I want to talk to you about, and we're going to talk about this thing of porn that so many have been connected to, and so many have fallen, and sometimes we don't really understand the depths of what we have connected ourselves to. And so I want to start this first part off with reading from what I believe is in the Word of God, something that really you must reckon or you must position your mind to believe this one thing in order for you to gain freedom from pornography. And so what we want to call this series is In Between the Sheets. In between the sheets, which means literally that although, you know, when we when we get involved with pornography, when we get involved with adultery or fornication or any sort of sexual sins, you know, it is indicative of the bed. But I want to let you know that with everything you do, there are layers like sheets. There are layers that you are immersing yourselves in. And if you're not careful, that bed may be your grave. The Word of God says in the book of Proverbs, it talks about a young man, I believe it's chapter 7, a young man that's void of understanding. And the scripture says that he, at the end of that verse, it says he does not know that going into her house will be his end or will lead to death. And so I'm here to tell you that oftentimes we don't realize the depths. When I look at over my own life and mistakes that I've made and, and choices that I've made that end up being the wrong choices, I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt that if we're not careful, then we will make decisions that we may have to pay for for a long time. But the scripture that I'm talking about that I believe is so powerful for those of us who have dealt with pornography or have fallen to sexual sins in order to get the freedom from it, that scripture, I believe, is found in Romans, the sixth chapter. And so in this video, I want to read this entire chapter, but I want you all to meditate on this chapter because everything that we talk about thereafter in every other video, subsequent video is going to be relative to this. So I want you to prayerfully meditate on this scripture and ask God for holy revelation. But let's read. It, it starts from verse one in Romans chapter six, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation, but you can follow as well. It says, well then, should we keep on sinning so that God can show us more and more of his wonderful grace? Of course not. Since we have died to sin, how can we continue to live in it? Or have you forgotten that when you were joined with Christ Jesus in baptism, we joined him in his death? For we died and were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives." Since we have been united with him in his death, we will also be raised to life as he was. We know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin. For when we died with Christ, we were set free from the power of sin. And since we died with Christ, we know we will also live with him. We are sure of this because Christ was raised from the dead and he will never die again. Death no longer has any power over him. When he died, he died once to break the power of sin. But now that he lives, he lives for the glory of God. So you also should consider yourselves to be dead to the power of sin and alive to God through Christ Jesus. Do not let sin control the way you live. Do not give into sinful desires. Do not let any part of your body become an instrument of evil to serve sin. Instead, give yourselves completely to God, for you were dead, but now you have new life. So use your whole body as an instrument to do what is right for the glory of God. Sin is no longer your master. 
For you no longer live under the requirements of the law. Instead, you live under the freedom of God's grace. Hallelujah. Well then, since God's grace has set us free from the law, does that mean we can go on sinning? Of course not. Don't you realize that you become the slave of whatever you choose to obey? You can be a slave to sin, which leads to death, or you can choose to obey God, which leads to righteous living. Thank God. Once you were slaves of sin, but now you wholeheartedly obey this teaching we have given you. Now you are free from your slavery to sin, and you have become slaves to righteous living. Because of the weakness of your human flesh, I am using the illustration of slavery to help you understand all of this. Previously, you let yourselves be slaves to impurity and lawlessness, which led ever deeper into sin. Now you must give yourselves to be slaves to righteous living so that you will become holy. When we were slaves to sin, you were freed from the obligation to do right. But what was the result? You are now ashamed of the things you used to do, things that end in eternal doom. But now, hallelujah, you are free from the power of sin and have become slaves of God. Now you do those things that leads to holiness and result in eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. That's Romans chapter 6 from verse 1 all the way through verse 23. It is important to know that you must reckon in your mind and you must put your faith on this thought. You are not held under bondage by anything. Nothing as a child of God, as a, as a servant of the king, as someone who has accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior, you now have been delivered and set free from the power and the bondages of sin. And if you don't reckon that, if you don't place that in your mind and say, you know what, this thing doesn't control me, but what I choose controls me. That's what you have to think in your mind. What you choose will control you. And so if you choose to live a life of unrighteousness, then that unrighteousness will become your master. And as it says in verse 19, it will lead you e even into deeper sins. So it is a, a doorway, if you will, a window, if you will, to lead you down a path of a darker path, a deeper into sin path, you will become more destructive, more self-implosive. I'm here to tell you that sins will lead you into deeper sins. Old folks used to say a saying, they used to say, if you give the, the devil an inch, he'll take a yard. I'm here to tell you that if you render or yield yourself to sin, the sins that you yield yourself to will lead you into deeper sins. But you, thank God, are not held under bondage by any sin. That's good news. This is part one. Look forward to In Between the Sheets, part two.